Hi guys, we've got a uh, rectilinear motion question today. Um, it says that an object has a position defined by the function s of t equals this cubic here, where our position is in feet. Now, what are the velocity and acceleration functions? So this is quite easy if we know how to differentiate. So let's start with that. We have a is equal to, so, the velocity function, we've got v of t, and we know that velocity is just uh, distance over time or change in distance over change in time, which can be also represented as the derivative of displacement with respect to time. So, if we take the derivative of this function, we're going to get, we've got 3t squared minus 18t plus 24. Awesome. Great. Now, for acceleration, acceleration is a lot like velocity. Let's just write that down. So we have acceleration in terms of time. Now, like velocity is the change in distance over or change in displacement over this dis change in time, acceleration is the change in velocity over the change in time. So, you'd probably venture a guess to say that this is going to be dv over dt. Sweet. So, if we differentiate the velocity equation we've literally just worked out, we're going to get 6t minus 18. Perfect. So, those are our velocity and acceleration functions. So, let's just give that a bit of a tick off. So, that's A done. Now, let's just separate this from so we can get B going. So, B. What are the position and velocity, that's not very good English, what is the position and the velocity of the object when the acceleration is negative 6.5 feet per second squared? Okay, so we have been given that acceleration in terms of time is equal to negative 6.5 feet per second squared. Cool. So we basically, from this, we're going to use our acceleration function we've just worked out to determine what time this is going to be equal to negative 6.5. So we're going to go 6t minus 18 equals negative 6.5. I'm going to plus 18 to both sides and divide by 6. So I'm going to have t is equal to 11.5 over 6. And this is equal to 1.9167 seconds. Cool. So then all we have to do is we have our velocity and we know our position functions. So we are going to just determine what the velocity is at this point in time. So we're just going to write V of 1.9167. Now I'm assuming you know how to substitute into formulas. So it's 3 times 1.9167 squared minus 18 times 1.9167 plus 24. And that is going to give us 0 0.521 feet per second. Cool. Now the acceleration, acceleration, the displacement, sorry, 
when time is equal to 1.9167. Again, like the velocity, we just plug in 1.9167 into this displacement function they've given us at the top. And it's not hard to determine that that's going to be equal to 39.98 feet. Okay, for part C, it's asked us to find the displacement and total distance travelled by the particle from t equals 1.5 seconds to t equals 7 seconds. Alright, so let's just separate this out. So, oh wow, that looks good. Okay, so for part C, we've got the displacement. Now, the displacement is the simple part for this one, so let's do that first. So, the displacement from t equals 1.5 to t equals 7 is simply going to be the uh, position at time equals 7, sorry, subtract the position at time equals 1.5. So, the way that we're going to write that down is we'll write uh, its displacement. is equal to the displacement or the position at 7 seconds subtract the position at 1.5 seconds so basically what we're going to do is we're going to substitute in 7 seconds into our displacement uh, formula and we end up with 90 feet subtract 39.125 feet, which is what displacement is when time is 1.5. And after we do that subtraction and we get 50 point eight seven five feet cool so distance now now the trick is with distance is with displacement like hopefully you guys all know displacement is the net difference between our starting and our finishing pos position but if we want to find out total distance for example if we start like at a point here and let me just change color while well, I explain this to you if I go this direction to start with for a certain amount of time I accelerate and then decelerate and get to a point here and then after that I then turn around and I come back to here and then from this position I end up going backwards to here. Now if my so my final position relative is here so my in this case my displacement would literally be from here to here and that's what we've just done. I'd get my time at the end, and I would just subtract my time from at the st at my just my time. I would get my position at the end, and I would subtract my position at the start. And the difference in those two positions would be my displacement. Now, how that differs from distance is the total distance travelled by this blue dot is going to be the sum of all of these red lines or the sum of the absolute value of all of these lines because we do not want the lines going in the right direction to cancel out with those going in the left direction. So what we're going to do is we're going to have to work out when the object first of all changes direction so if in this case when it goes from going right to going left i.e. here and when it goes from going left to going right i.e. here. Now, in this direction, we're going, our velocity, if we call this the positive direction, our velocity is positive, and then it turns to negative. Now, when it turns to negative, the instant it turns to negative, the velocity is zero. 
at the instant that it goes from being negative to positive, the velocity is again zero. So what we're going to have to do first is we're going to have to figure out at what times, if any, on this domain, t equals 1.5 to 7, we have to figure out what parts of that does the velocity equal zero. So let's start. So this is our distance. So, we've got our velocity equation, v in terms of t is equal to 3t squared minus 18t plus 24. Great, now that, we're looking for the points where that equals 0. So the way we're going to do this, if we're not given a calculator with graphing ability or solving ability, we're going to have to solve this by hand. So let's just have a go at it. The way I would do this, I'd see that they're all divisible by 3. And from here, I'd then um, factorize the inside part, the quadratic here. And I would go, well, this is then going to be equal to 3. Two numbers that add together to give negative 6 and multiply together to give positive 8 is negative 2 and negative 4. Yep. So t minus 2, t minus 4 equals 0. So as a result, so what this tells us, let's just save some room. What this tells us is that the times when velocity is equal to zero is time equals two and time equals four. Cool, so that's very, very important. So what we're gonna have to do from here then is if we draw a sort of a, I, I don't know, a timeline of what we're Doing here, we've got time equals 1.5 here. We've got time equals 7 over here. And on this, we've got 2 and 4. Now, it doesn't have to be to scale. I'm not using it to do anything other than figure out when time is equal to when velocity is equal to 0 and also to separate out the, separate out the different displacements. So, for example, on our little diagram here, I'm going positive. So what I would be doing here is I'm going to work out what my displacement is at the instant that velocity is equal to zero, and I'm going to work out how far I've gone there. Then I'm going to work out what my displacement is from that point to the next time velocity is equal to zero, and then I'm going to work out my displacement from there to the end of the actual time domain that we've been asked for. So here, my displacement at time equals 1.5, we know from previous that it's 50.8, sorry, it's 39.125. The displacement when time equals 2 is equal to 40. And all I'm doing is substituting 2 into our displacement equation. The displacement when time equals 4 is 36, and the displacement when time equals 7 is 90. Great. So, what we're going to do is we're then going to use those numbers to work out the difference between them. So the difference between 39.125 and 40 is 0 0.875. The difference between 40 and 36 is 4, because we're looking for just the absolute value of each of these numbers. So this is going to be 4. And the difference between 36 and 90 is 54. So basically what we can do is the total distance travelled is going to be these three numbers just added together, like we would if we have these three arrows. We're just going to add them all together. So our total displacement or total distance is going to equal 
feet. Okay, so you can see that there's a few different things that are involved in this question. Like they've asked us to start with what is the velocity and acceleration functions. All that we have to know is we have to know the relationship between displacement and velocity is velocity is the derivative of displacement and that acceleration is then the derivative of velocity. And if we know how to cal calculate a derivative, then we're okay for part A. We can get those marks. B, what are the position and velocity of the object when its acceleration is negative 6.5 feet per second squared? Well, if we have calculated the acceleration function and the velocity function correctly from part A, this is just going to require us to substitute negative 6.5 feet per second squared into the acceleration function and solve for time. And once we've solved for time then, we just have to substitute that in to the velocity and the displacement functions to get our two, um, well our velocity in terms of feet per second and our displacement in terms of just feet. Now, C, the probably the most, like the most convoluted or complicated part, is find the displacement and the total distance travelled by the particle from t equals 1.5 to t equals 7 seconds. Okay, well, the first one, the total displacement or the displacement of the particle is just going to be the final position of the object subtract the initial position of the object. And the difference between them is going to be our displacement. Now, the total distance travelled by the particle is going to be what we have to do is we have to work out the different components of displacement over the entire 1.5 to 7 in terms of the initially we went if we're talking about just right and left we went right by 0 0.875 we then went left by 4 and then we went right again by 54 so what we have to do is we worked out when we change direction i.e. when our velocity is equal to 0 and then we're able to plug in these different points, add them all together, we'll add together the absolute values of each of these so they don't cancel each other out, and we finally have our answer. So it's a little bit convoluted, the last problem, but if you understand that the um, different directions of the displacement will end up cancelling each other out, and that we can separate them by finding when the velocity is equal to zero, it's not that complicated, and you should be able to work these out when faced with them in an exam. So I hope my video helped and I'll uh, see you again next time.